Dr. Karen Gordon now to talk about sex, baby. Oh, Let's yes. talk about you and me. <laughs> you know what? It's always good to talk about it, and it's something that should be discussed yeah. because there are quite a few people that are not necessarily as satisfied as they should be in the bedroom. Right. So we want to get it all out. And I know that you get it all out with our audience. You give them a survey, talk yep. to them a little bit about the, the subject, and, and get their pulse. Yeah. Right? Just to, I'd like to kind of find it with what our audience, you know, with what's going actually on with our audience. And so it was interesting when I actually went in to, to kind of let them know about the survey. As soon as I said, are you having enough sex? All of a sudden, <gasps> like all of a sudden it's like gas within the entire room. So here are the, the final survey. So in terms of, there's two parts of the question. Question number one is, are you personally getting enough sex? Yeah. 50% said yes and 50% said no. Okay. So really pretty much right down the middle. Yeah. And then the second part of the question was, are, is your spouse getting enough sex? Oh, because, interesting. Because we might be getting enough sex, but our spouse is not, because people right. have different measuring sticks, right? So, yeah. um, and according to our audience, 62% actually said yes, I think my spouse is getting enough sex, and 38% said they're, they're not. So something to follow up with your spouse when you get home. Because you want to basically you have the make sure, same yes. level there. Right. You know, we're you both make feeling sure good about satisfied. it. Yes. So let's talk about the reasons why maybe people are not having as much as they want to be having. Right, so there's a lot of different barriers that kind of uh, that block a lot of people. Number one, I would say, actually, is schedules. And a lot of people actually talked about that. People are in different schedules. You know, yeah. if, if people are in shift work, if kids are going to bed earlier, or one person's staying up later. So if you're not physically in the same bed, it just makes it a little bit tricky. It gets a little tough. It gets a little bit trickier. Exhaustion must have come up because yes. people are always complaining about being tired. Yes. It's just that day and age, yes. right? So exhaustion, people are physically, especially we see this with the new moms. I mean, people are just so tired. When you're physically yeah. tired, you have nothing left. Right. Um, so that is a very popular one, for certainly for a lot of new moms. Now, what about all of the things that happen in a day? You could be stressed out about yep. work. You could be depressed. You could be sad. Right. You, there right. so, could be so many things. That's going to affect your right. sex so life as well. So a third obstacle for a lot of people is just emotionally how they're feeling. So I certainly see this at our center a lot with stress and anxiety and depression. If, yeah. people, are, um, or if people are depressed, it's like all of their energy is getting poured into that emotion. They have nothing left over. So mm -hmm. the sex drive a lot of times will completely come off during stress and uh, anxiety and depression. So there is a, an actual medical reason to look into it at some point, there, right? Those two, that's where the emotional and the physical parts are very, very connected. So yeah. when I'm dealing with, with depression, I always want to make sure that they're dealing with their physician on the physical side, and then we look at it from the emotional side. Got it. Uh, just feeling disconnected from your partner. That comes yes. up a lot, huh? Yes. And you know what? I want to just read something with what somebody said. So this is a fourth obstacle is people just feel they're not feeling connected. We, we've talked mm -hmm. about this on the show before in terms mm -hmm. of people, especially for when we need to feel that emotional connection. And here is what one of the one person said, which I think is very important. She said, both of us gave all of our emotional investment into our new baby, no love left over. I hear that. Right? I get like, it. It's that, so for yeah. new for new couples with new with new children, that's one of the biggest barriers. Is all of a sudden all that energy now gets poured into that baby. You got to be mm. really really careful that you're still investing into the relationship. You know, I hear that a lot about men fearing that when yeah. Uh, when, yeah. when right. they are having a baby because they know that their right. partner is going to be completely right. invested. But you very rarely hear it from the other end. Yeah. So both of them have recognized yes. that we're putting yes. so much affection and energy right. into these kids right. it's hard to have any leftover yes. so what are you supposed to do about that just wait until they get a little older or pull no, back you've got to pull the back kids? it's really it's it's important to invest into your children but you it's it's almost like realizing the importance of a relationship mm -hmm. like you it is so critical especially for new parents to make sure that they're still investing into that marriage yeah. that that relationship is separate from being parents there's the couple relationship and then there's in terms of the role actually of a, of a parent but it's a really it's almost like strategically you've got to make sure that you're actually investing into it because otherwise what happens exactly as this person said all that emotional energy now gets put into the baby and their marriage kind of separates it falls, it falls apart yeah and a lot of couples that actually when I talk to them you know 5 10 15 years of marriage they'll actually say that when I when I ask them when did it actually start they a lot of people say as soon as we had our first child yeah it's start it's the the gap starts yeah so you need to kind of close in that gap and really again being uh, being intentional about it Bit of an uphill battle considering how child focused people are these days, at least in the Western world. Yes. It's all about the kids. My, pa right. my parents are flabbergasted at how. Right tuned in we are to their nap schedule and their right. feeding schedule. Right. My parents were like, we didn't have a schedule with you. Right. Like you would just fall asleep right. somewhere and you would sleep there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whereas we're like, relaxed, shush right? Very the baby, right. put the baby right. in the crib. We're, we're, we're too, we're too, almost too focused, right? Yeah, we're almost like too, too focused. 
Okay, so emotionally disconnected from partner, or the sex is predictable and So this boring. is kind of like the fifth obstacle. A lot of people say, you know what, the sex is just boring. I'm it's not predictable, into it. I'm not into it. It's boring, it's predictable, we gotta spice it up. Yeah. So in terms of, for when I work with couples, I think it's good, and these are not, this is not an exhaustive list. There's gonna be other obstacles as well. Yeah. But in terms of like trying to get couples kind of back connected into this, you just wanna figure out what is our obstacle? What actually is our obstacle? Yeah. And basically then you actually start talking about it, saying, okay, what is our obstacle? And then what are actually, we, what are we gonna do about it? It. What's going to be the solution to kind of fix it? But we right. have to kind of almost understand what the obstacle is first before we can actually start talking about the solution for it. Yeah, come up with an action plan. Right. So the problem is a lot of people aren't talking about it because right. they don't know how to talk about right. it. Right. How do you talk about it? How do you broach the subject? Okay, so what of, I would I'm not say, satisfied with our sex okay, life. Okay, so what right I would now. say um, after this show, if I was a person watching this at home mm -hmm. and I'm not having enough sex, what I would say to my spouse when they come home late at night when I'm relaxed, he's relaxed, it's just the two of us. I'd say, honey, do you want to have more sex? Yeah. That's what I would say. Come right out with it. Yes. And you'll probably get their attention. Yeah. And then, because they <laughs> like probably Leah. will. It's like, hmm, mm -hmm. that sounds kind of interesting. Yeah. And then just say, you know what? I was watching City. I was watching City Line today, and they were talking about couples that are not having enough sex. And here are the five things. I'm just curious. I know it's back to that word. Yeah. I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, I know. Curious. You get, I get. I'm curious whether or not you think any of these are actually one of our obstacles. I'm just curious with what your thoughts are on that. Good. Okay, keep Does it open, keep, keep it, it non-judgmental, non don't, non don't make it accusatory, yes. make it a, hey, I was Curious. thinking, maybe we could have more right. sex. <laughs> who's, gonna, who's really going to say no to that? Like, okay, let's exactly. do it. You will get their attention. Yeah. But the idea is that you need to have the courage to raise it. Right. Because a lot of people are afraid, so okay. they avoid. Okay. And we have to good have the stuff. courage to raise this topic. Very good tips, my friend. I like it.